Hey, what's up, guys? This is Hunter Ray Jack, and I am here today to bring you guys a playthrough for Nintendo Switch's version of the Graziah Note trilogy. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting because I literally bought this as soon as I saw it. I was just like, why the hell not? Let's actually see what this would look like on a Nintendo Switch. And because this is. You guys already know that I'm very familiar with the series. So I bought this one and I also bought the Phantom Trigger, which is a game that I've actually not played all that much. So that would be a game to look forward to me getting into. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. We're starting with the Fruit of Desire because we actually have to play these games in order because all the rest of it is freaking locked for some odd ass reason. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. This is going to be funny. Intense sunlight. A blazes down on the road as if to declare the arrival of summer. The burning asphalt radiates heat, mixing with the scent of the tide to form a thick, muggy atmosphere. Okay. It's way too early for this kind of weather, and when the temperatures are normally high, you're always going to get some people who lose their heads and start acting irrationally. In other words, it's only natural that the police would be on the lookout for suspicious types and times like these. It was about 10 minutes ago that I realized I'd been mistaken for one of those heat stroke addict, adult sorts. <sighs> Sweat pouring from his forehead as he examines my license, the policeman in front of me takes a glance at the large backpack I'm carrying, then continues the background check. Yes. I told you this 10 minutes ago, I'm moving. This luggage is everything I own. Like I said, I don't have one yet. The answer is not going to change no matter how many times you ask. Come clean with what? What is there to come clean with? Where do you come from? Where are you going? What are you planning to do there? And depending on the context, these could be fairly philosophical questions. But as far as police inquiries go, they're pretty run-of-the-mill. From their perspective, anyone wandering around without clear-cut business is by default a criminal of some sort. Let alone someone like me carrying around this conspicuous bulky luggage. It's as good as guaranteed that they'd stop me. That is their job, I suppose, since th this little scene act as a, as a crime deterrent through its visibility. It's not an entirely wasted effort. But unfortunately, I don't have all day to play along. I drop a glance towards the digital watch I'm wearing around my left wrist. Sorry, but I'm keeping someone waiting. I really can't spare any more time for hanging out with bored cops. Yes, I'm mocking you. A bored cop... A bored... Uh, a bored police force is proof that the city's at peace. Take it as a compliment. Inexplicably, you take an offense to my tone. The policeman clicked his tongue in irritation and tosses my license back. I refuse. I don't rely on blades. Policy of mine. Look, are you really telling me to unpack all this on the spot? It'll take an hour at least. 30 minutes just to take it all out, 30 minutes to stuff it back in. I just told you I don't have the time. I can't accept voluntary questioning. I know you can't just back down in this situation, but... If I say I'll head over there myself later, could we wrap this up for now? As I ex I've explained, I'm in the middle of a move. 
I vacated my old place, so I don't have an address. Ah, my father's house. His parents are dead, jackass. I don't have any parents, no siblings or relatives either. They're all dead. This is going nowhere. Then at least let me call the person I'm supposed to be meeting. At this rate, they'll be waiting all day. I'm not going to tell you that. It's your mother. We had an appointment at, at the hotel tonight. Huh? I was keeping quiet out of the goodness of my heart. You dragged it out of me, so don't blame me when your parents get divorced and your happy home is shattered. <laughs> About 30 meters away from where we were talking, someone screams. A desperate cry follows within seconds. A woman sits collapsed on the street. She's stretching out her hand. Her high heels lying, I mean, lie on the ground knocked off her feet by the sudden fall. Just about halfway between us, there's a man in a flashy Hawaiian shirt running in this direction. And although the thief flat flinches for a moment at the sight of the policeman's uniform, after a quick check for any convenient side streets, he barrels on Brandishing the stolen bag menacingly, his hand violently gesturing out of my way. The cop is completely flustered. He he's completely he's quite clearly unaccustomed to this sort of situation. He's panicking. The distance between us and the thief shrinks with surprising swiftness. The man rushes in a straight line towards a breakneck, a breakthrough to freedom. I happen to be standing directly in the middle of his path. As he prepares to strike with the bag. I ascertain the movements of his shoulder and arm from the first sign of movement and hit his wrist sharply just as he begins to swing. The man's arm instantly stiffens and loses all momentum. His eyes drop wide open, pop wide open in shock. I immediately grab the collar of the Hawaiian shirt he's wearing and firmly draw him towards me. And before the man can offer resistance to my pull, I smoothly reverse and use my body's weight to shove against him. When pushed just as they begun to brace themselves against being pulled, anyone except a genuine expert is going to be thrown off balance. Nice shirt, where'd you buy it? The shock spread across the man's face as he hits his knees buckle against his will. I tried to gain a chokehold using my grip on the neck of his shirt, but... The man promptly draws his head back and shifts his body to the side, preventing me from landing a hold on his neck. Although I expected as much from a glance at his build, it seems like he's somewhat experienced in judo. But, in this case, you would have been better off trying a decisive tackle. Rotating around the purse snatcher in the opposite direction of his slide, I yank his right arm upward with both hands. I've circled to his back. Next, pull back on the opponent's wrist and elbow and pin him to the ground. This is just basic Aikido. Oh, by the way. <laughs> hey now, you got your priorities all wrong. Before worrying about me, you should kill the guy who sold you that shirt. Perhaps unconsciously, the man's now empty right hand desperately slapped at the asphalt. While holding the thief pinned, I quickly shoot a look behind me. Don't just stand there! Oh. The policeman jerks up, up straight in response to my angry shout, uh, taking a pair of handcuffs from the pouch around his waist. He runs over to restrain the criminal. 
the purse snatcher seems to have resigned himself up to his fate and doesn't offer any pointless resistance. He accepts his red-handed arrest for thief uh, docilely, wait, for theft docilely, then sits quietly on the ground with his head hung as the policeman radios for Becca. Apparently, they weren't too far off as a siren approaches in no time. Two policemen get out of the arriving cruiser and push the criminal into the back seat. As I'm quietly watching the scene in perfect passivity, the policeman from earlier runs over. <sighs> I'll pass on the letter of thanks, so how about letting me move on? <laughs> Figured as much. Shaking my head in exasperation, I quietly rebuke myself. Should have just left it alone. As the policeman pushes my back, as I at a glance at my watch, which watch informs me that I'm already five minutes late for my meeting. Ah. <sighs> 30 minutes have passed since I was brought to the interrogation room, familiar as the place where criminals break into who flap sweat in TV dramas. I'm sitting on a cheap foldable pipe I chair, my arms folded in perfect silence. <laughs> Instead of responding, I close my eyes, a silent statement indicating that I have absolutely no intention of opening my mouth. The detective clicks his tongue in exasperation at my attitude. I've got a pretty fair idea of what he'll be doing now. The sound of something being struck in an even louder attempt at intimidation and this is the point where a timid guy would be jumping in his seat with his eyes wide open or maybe staring at the floor and quivering. As for me, my eyes are still shut and my arms are still folded quietly. My mind is a total blank. I've been accustomed to adults shouting at me like this since I was a child. Following the threat stage, the next step would be for him to rip my hair and jolt me back and forth, but I'm dealing with an official authority group here. I should get off without direct violence this time. Not to say that they won't pull out the old TV cliches and harass me by shining a desk lamp in my eyes or something of the sort. I could roughly translate the detective sigh. Damn it, kids these days. Goddamn kids these days. I gently open my eyes in order to sneak a look at his disgusted face. The detective sitting in front of me seems to be challenging the Guinness World the Guinness World Record for the most dramatic it as me between the left and right side of a human's mouth. Wait, asymmetry asymmetry. Or maybe he's just scowling. The Guinness, right? When I let out a snort of laughter in response to the unexpectedly pleasant sight, the, the detective scratched his head violently and glares at me. It won't gain you anything, but you won't lose anything either, except your time. I turn my gaze to the clock on the wall of the sweat box. An hour has passed has already passed since the scheduled time for my meeting. The detective strikes the desk with ex excellent comic timing. The best part is the way he knocks his ashtray off the table every time he does this. <laughs> His tone distinctively they fed up. He stoops down to pick the plastic tray off the floor. Kazuma Yuji, occupation student. Kazuma Yuji. 
過去の犯罪歴はなし歩道歴も交通違反もなし何かを表彰されるようなこともなしここまで綺麗な賞罰なしってのは変だろうまるで誰かが細工したみてえに真っ白なんだよお前はお前は一体何者なんだ何 of your business probably means that you should not be actually looking into this because you could end up on the wrong side of, of the actual law I mean of the hidden laws and you could wind up dead Kazumi Yuji occupation student I call him Kazuma didn't I? なんだそりゃ警察に捕まったらそれしか言うなって誰かに言われてんのかお前どっかのテロリストか Kazumi Yuji occupation student もういい黙れ First, it's say something, now it's shut up. Talk about hard to please. Our capricious detective scowls yet again and scratches his head. Flakes of dander drift grandly through the air. Based on his thoroughly wrinkled suit and heavily and heavy stubble, I'd say he hasn't been home in days. Nah, nah, nah. Tanomu yo. Gotchi no jijo mo kangae te kure yo. Another sigh. It's enough to make me want to heave one myself. Because we both take our jobs seriously. It's been like we're stuck going around in circles. Just as we roughly complete. This exchange of one sided bitterness and mutual glaring, there is a well timed knock at the door and the sound of it、はい、being unlocked. ああ a slightly plump elderly detective enters the room. Given the respectful tone of the detective I've been chatting with, he's probably a superior of some sort. Hi. After a quick glance in my direction, the elderly detective whispers something into the younger man's ear. Before long, the younger detective turned towards me with a decidedly unplaused expression. Non plaused. Why now, all of a sudden? With those, word, those parting words, the young detective leaves the room. The elderly detective watches him go and then faces me with a creepy smile. I don't know if I'm going to be a good guy. Kazami. 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 The detective stares at me with eyes like a dead fish. Even though you, Kazumi Yuji already has eyes on a dead fish. If you'd known I was from Ichigaya from the start, wouldn't you have thrown me in jail, stripped me naked, and sprayed me down with a hose? <laughs> Uh, just to let you know, I'm nothing but a student. My work at Ichigaya is only a part time cleaning job. In response to my words, the detective twists his mouth into something vaguely resembling a smile. そちらさんもそんなご事情ならばもっと早く言っておいていただければよかったんですがご存知かと思いますが上があれですからいろいろとややこしくてね<笑> First of all, the police shouldn't have been heckling him in the first place. This is the guy just going about his business. And as soon as you see a guy going about his business with a big old bag and Just looking even remotely out of place, you think, oh, he must be suspicious. We caught a guy, so let's just start interrogating him for no fucking reason. Cops always do that shit, especially cops in America. If you're my color, freaking cops do that shit for no fucking reason. Well, they don't do that, but they do corner you and then they start 
whipping out guns and trying to shoot you for no fucking reason. Sarcasm dripping from every pore in his body. The detective treats me with transparency, with transparently insincere courtesy. He's pretty, he's perfectly civil on a superficial level, but the atmosphere in here is growing increasingly unpleasant. The younger detective from before, hard as that he was, seeming he seems infinitely preferable. Did you inquire to Ichigai yeah, about me? Anata no namai o database de kensak sase tan desu ga ne? Kensak shite iru saichu ni denwa ga narimashite. Jiwaki o agete mitara boe shou no tokubetsu no kikan kara no denwa deshite. Uchi no inu ga sochira de hougo sarete inai ka to kikimashite ne? Ya, odorokimashita yo jissai. <laughs> You're not funny, dude. Since you found my owner and confirmed that my leash is properly attached, I should be able to leave now, right? That's so. Hey, hey, hey. Nakanaka Irasharana Ikarato, お預かりした荷物は玄関に出してありますのでそちらで何でしたらうちの車でお送りしましょうか。You're not getting funds from public taxes in order to chauffeur bums like me around, are you? I walk. After I'm urged out the door by the old man, the young detective appears from the rear carrying the backpack they take it from me earlier. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. Okay, so there wasn't no any of that. A bit of a tough question. I guess you could say my life. And that wasn't really what I was going for. Then don't ask a stupid question like that. Dropping the backpack next to me, the detective lets out a slight sigh. Thanks for lugging it out here. Pretty heavy, isn't it? True. Guess that's natural for a policeman. Sorry. The detective smiles wearily. I'm wearing the school uniform. You can see it at you can see it at a glance. He clasped my shoulders as we passed each other. With those parting words, he heads back into the police station. Guess I don't have a convincing student. Yeah, I don't make a convincing student yet. I'm wearing black slacks and a short sleeve dress shirt, as well as a blue tartan then check neck necktie excluding my somewhat longish hair i should be the very image of a student i guess it's a little different coat turning into something like that all of a sudden but it's probably precisely because this is difficult that i decided to give it a try for a while i myself may didn't understand why i act what I'd ask for this, but now I think I have a faint grasp on the reason. I wanted to become something that I couldn't understand, something that I wasn't. At the moment, I've done nothing but smooth down my edges a bit. Perhaps later on, I'll become a student on the inside as well. The sun that had been climbing upwards earlier has now finally reached its zenith. The temperature keeps on rising and sweat oozes from my skin. I was pretty sure she'd pick me up, but hmm. 
and sensing a presence, I lowered my gaze from the sun. My eyes, well accustomed to high contrast lighting, project a human form in silhouette for only the briefest of moments before the details fade in. A woman raising an awkward salute, grinning broadly, stands before my eyes. Spare me! I don't want to see a pose like that outside the workplace. In the first place, what's with that dopey salute? The girls in bikinis on the <laughs> Martine S. I mean, yeah, Maritime SDF recruitment poster have more impressive forms. I don't recall contributing. Ugh, I don't recall contributing enough to society today to deserve any appreciation. She opened the door of the car stop next to her. Yeah, true enough. Uh, from Mishima Cafe Police Station to National Highway, a number 133, southbound. We proceed to the prefectural highway and advance, advance further out towards the cafe. A range of slowly rotating wind turbines come into view, indicating our proximity to the sea. I doubt you really thought I was sick. You were trying to police. You were trying the police stations first, not the hospitals. Accuracy in weather forecasts and interpersonal um, accommodations make society run smoother. I can't see her cuteness if I don't put that up. Pouting again, she continues her herringe. This thing is making my freaking controller go freaking crazy right now. Sorry, I hate trains. Could you not mention this to the other students? I don't want them getting funny ideas about me from the get-go. I got enough of that from the police la to last me a while. I mean, did you think he wrecked it? The car proceeds about 500 meters around the, an area of reclaimed coastal land before she brought it to a stop. It's that, I mean, so that's what he meant by landfill, I see. As I'm recalling the words of the detective from before, the woman continues our conversation with a suddenly cheerful tone. <laughs> And very nice, barely even looks like a school. Although I'd heard it was a new school, its external appearance genuinely isn't what I expected. A three-story building, the pure white color of the outer walls is the only typical school-like element with every other aspect more closely resembling a city office building. The gates to the right and left are less evocate the uh, uh, wait. Yet evocative of a school gate than a functional fence at some facility. See? The mounted signboard likewise is a utilitarian thing printed in a simple typeface rather than a hand-drawn work of calligraphy. 
これからここがあなたの母校になるのよ感慨深くない I've only just arrived at this place. If I had, if I said I was deeply moved by the sight, it'd be a lie. True. With an, exasper- an exaggerated sigh, she opens her hands wide in the overblown gesture of a third rate actor. Oops. <laughs> really? Her regamo. Oh, hey. Her rigmarole、oh, is abruptly interrupted by the high pitched shrieks of two girls. Does she have a cicada strapped to a rope? <laughs> oh, she does have it by a rope, and his freaking wings just sprayed, and now the bug is activated. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Normal. Could you define that term? Is there a class where we chase each other around brandishing insects? I don't think I do, but it's nice to see that it's a lively school. Oh, come on, Yuji. Don't, don't troll the poor child. Having apparently forgotten what she was planning to do with her outspread hands, she totters through the school gate. Her office is positioned quite near the school building's front entrance. The furniture is nicely arranged, based around an old fashioned desk and chair. In contrast to the incongruity of the building's external appearance, this room is a textbook example of the old fashioned principal office. <laughs> I sit on the genuine leather sofa that's one of the room's more prominent f- furnishings. After waiting for me to settle myself, she lowers herself into the seat across the room. I've been talking about drinking, so. Hmm. On a practical level, nice to meet you might be the better option. With a slight amused smile, Principal Tachibanda takes out a pencil. She flips past a couple pages of the brochure I hadn't noticed, but her fingernails are lightly polished. Mm-hmm. ま、ず… 
The principal talks shifts to more detailed matters. Principal's talk. The East Beach Express is an enormous corporate group with its hand in real estate and large scale retail. But its core business is the management of the rail line connecting Tokyo to Haneda Airport. The EBE's management is shouldered by the Sakaki family, and it seems plausible that the Sakaki Academy Corporation is also administered by them directly, but that's only a guess based on circumstantial evidence. There's a lack of public information on the secretive corporation's activities. The very existence of this academy isn't well known. I didn't gain anything that could be called definitive proof of from my investigation so far. Her fingers come to a stop, bringing her hands gently together. The principal raises her gaze from the pamphlet and meets my eyes. I don't know about that. I have a few questions. First, today is a weekday, but there was barely anyone on the school grounds. What's going on? Only six? The elite few. That include our friends with the cicadas just now. Question two. Where am I living from today on? A dormitory, is it? In that case, not a problem. Before we finish, one last thing. For this last question, only I stare directly into her eyes. I need to confirm the principal's intentions in bringing me here. After all said and done, is this a normal school? The principal closes her mouth. After a moment of silence, she opens it again. A gentle smile. I'm convinced that she isn't lying to me to further some hidden self-interest. The principal slowly stands up and walks to the window side. The athletics grounds are visible from the window. Although resembling those of a normal school, the grounds are skirted by an improbably high wall. Mm. The mere handful of students, the brazenly extravagant facilities, the on-campus dormitory, the high wall surrounding it all, they clearly indicate abnormality. I guess you're right. As normal as this type of school can be, this is more like a private school. The principal turns to face me. Yeah, I just don't know why they didn't say this is just a private school. It's like, yeah, it's a normal school but it's more like a normal private school where people can just have like a normal life with it's a private school with that with not too many restrictions understood yeah with a nod i raise to my feet on the grounds outside a gust of salty sea air kicks up a cloud of sand Mm. 
何キュロキュロしてるの The cicada pair from earlier don't seem to be around. So, Santo Iris San no cotone. Tarito Mamada Gakueni no cote no camone. Comine San Muina Yodashi. That Comine guy, a student here too. So no coni Luna and I utano de tanda kedo. Sugata ga miena kora. So, you don't have a minute grasp on the movements of the students, see, I see. Merely, is it? The principal walks towards the interior of the building. Left there by myself, I stare vacantly up at the ceiling. Soon, I've unconsciously fallen into my habit of counting the number of visible sprinklers, then roughly estimating the scale of the building. And calculating the time needed to gain control of the front entrance and ascertaining the location of the emergency exits. Huh. Not that many support pillars are here are there. Guess that's why the ceiling is a bit low. Ano? Ano? Having grown absorbed in analyzing the building, I don't even notice the tug at my sleeve. Ano? It's a maid. Until the final excuse me of many finally catches my ear. Hmm. I drop my gaze in the direction of the voice and find a girl in housemaid clothes looking up at me. Not that she's a particularly diminutive height, except in comparison to a taller male like me. No one's going to admit that, that they're an intruder if you ask them point blank. Ah, oh, I miss that the scales have fallen from my eyes. I miss that saying she used to say all the time. The maid nods several times, slowly closing her eyes and begins to repeat my words. She's cute. Komine <laughs> Oh my god, really? Flexible thinking isn't your strong suit, clearly. No, never mind. So, what does a maid want with me? Does he look suspicious to you? This would be the second time today I've heard that pickup line. You're a lot tougher than you look, maid. At this point, having noticed our voices, the principal calls out to the girl. It seems that this, this maid was Komine all along. I'm Kazumi Yuji. Good to meet you. I would like nice to meet you more than good to meet you. I don't think you introduced yourself. And this time, but the first name. Hmm. I had this thought earlier with the other two, but you certainly gathered some unique elites here. Which would mean that she's a student too. No, she's just in a maid outfit, and that's weird. That's not really my point of confusion here. Our uniform creates certain preconceptions. For example, if I see a girl wearing bunny ears in a bar, I don't ask what she's done with her Bible. Hmm. 
That's not an accept. Uh, that's not an explanation. <laughs> I'm said exception. わかりました。えっと、it was Mitsuru who said that, didn't she? I see. You're uh, a devoted one. That fallen bunny girl sister could learn a thing or two from you. I wasn't really intending that to be a compliment, but there's no point in telling her that. No objections. Yeah, if you would. The maid slowly begins to walk, but quickly comes to a stop in front of the management room. Stop dead. She's staring at me with an expression that clearly indicates she has something to say. What's wrong? Do you need something? Come to think of it, you're right. Well, you can call me whatever you want. And Yuji should have realized it sooner, but he didn't because he doesn't like to recall his past. But basically, these two are childhood friends. That's why she went with that instantly. We've gotten pretty familiar all of a sudden. Sure. Anyways, I'll call you Sachi. My bad. Would Sachimon be better? Her expression didn't change in the slightest, but her eyes at the moment she spoke those words had a strange forcefulness. That's so. Alright, Sachi. Best regards and all that. Judging from her smile, it seems she doesn't dislike being called Sachi. A nameplate seems to say it's the management room though. In other words, she wants me to play the prison guard. Well, at the very least, three out of the six students living in this dorm are females. It would probably be prudent to have a room as far as possible from theirs to avoid potential trouble. Mind if I take a look inside? Here we go. When I open the door with the key she hands me, I, I mean, a promptly placed set of kitchen and household goods catches my eye. They seem to be in good shape. I can confirm with a glance that the room itself will be a more than adequate living environment this given my needs. Got it. She seems to have guessed my thoughts from the direction of my gaze. Mm-hmm. As a little test, I focus my eyes on a different point of interest, and she provides me an explanation in the same way. Although she's a little off in some departments, she seems to be pretty sharp in other respects. I see. Looks like there won't be any problems. As I speak, I twist the faucet over the sink. Was someone using this room before I came? The water's pretty, pretty clear considering. 
お掃除の時にバケツの水を汲むために使っていましたから I see I twist the faucet to stop the water drop the luggage I've been carrying on the spot and promptly leave the room それから玄関を入って正面のスペースはみんなの共有の場所になっています The standard student dorm common I mean, yeah, community space,、はい、is it? Maki chan ya Amane san nanka wa yoku koko de sugo shite imasu yo. That's so. Although I haven't heard those names before, they must be other students. Kazami san no hea no tonari wa boiler shit. Sono shomen ga kaidan de. Sono oku ni wa yotsu no hea ga atte. Kaidan no tonari no sango shit ga watashi no hea ni nari masu. I'd heard there are eleven rooms in total. Any reason why you pick one on the first floor? She, huh? San, chi, sa, chi, san. I don't get the rhyme. I get the idea. ここが2階です。2階は基本的に部屋のみの構造となっていて、私以外の学生さんは全員この階に住んでいます。Which would mean two of these are fake?7、はい、号室と9号室は現在空き部屋になっています。3階はこの大浴場をはじめとした戦闘的な構造になっています。階段の反対側には、コインランドリーや物干しスペースもあるので必要な時に利用してくださいもし洗濯自体が苦手なようでしたら私に言っていただければ代行しますので Wouldn't taking care of someone else's chores be a nuisance? Alright, I'll keep that offer in mind There's no reason to refuse outright when the offer is delivered with such an earnest smile. By the way, can't we use this grand bathhouse as we please? As she speaks, she hands me a card that reads in use male bathing. Sure, I think I might take advantage of it pretty often. The view up here is pretty nice. An ocean view, huh? Not bad. As she speaks, I know the Sachi is already holding a towel and change of clothes in her hand. You're pretty well prepared. I see. The fruit of your experience, is it? What's wrong? As if to demonstrate, female underwear slip out from among the clothes in Sachi's hands. Is this a de declaration that you want to bathe together? Hmm. I really don't think there's anything to apologize for. Let's see. Can I ask about something other than the dorm? In that case, let's hear your three sizes, Saji. Did she really? At the moment, is there a specific man you're going out with? <laughs> your experience with men to date. Hmm. I know I'm the one who asks you those questions, but answering them so politely would that also be because you're the class representative? <laughs> 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 
What the hell? That's funny. <laughs> what an admirable devotion to customer service. Nothing comes to mind. Got it. With that note of farewell, Sachi bells like a genuine housemaid and starts to turn away. Ah, uh, Sachi. Thanks for the tour. I appreciate it. Ahem. The class representative these days seem to be a surprisingly tough willed breed. After Sachi's tour ended, I took another look around the interior of the building on my own. By the time I return to my room, the sun is already low in the sky and the light gr growing dim. Should probably put this stuff away before it gets dark. Opening my backpack, I pull out the contents and begin to put them away on the shelves I've been provided with. It's a real hell that I've got a closet. Things I can leave in a visible place and things to be stowed away in the backpack. Dividing my possessions between the two, the latter are clearly more numerous. Normal, huh? While looking over my mountain of luggage, I mother in a self-depreciating tone. As I work, the sun sinks leisurely into the sea. So there you guys have it. That was my playthrough for the Fruit of Gazaya on Nintendo Switch. Now, yes, I just wanted to show you guys what this looked like on the Nintendo Switch. And this is basically my... This is basically my telling you guys that if you want the game, if you want to experience the game without the um age scenes you know you guys can actually order this on your handheld game and basically just play this anywhere on the go at your own leisure and enjoy the game at that it's very fun it's very long so you guys could get a lot of miles out of this like if you're saying going on a long trip and you bring your nintendo switch you guys can go ahead click on this game and just play it to your heart's content now you i think there's a f actual physical copy although i'm definitely not sure that well actually if there is physical copy, you probably have to go on other websites like JList and stuff. I'm going to actually look and see if there are physical copies and I'm going to put it down. I'm going to like put the link down in the description below so you guys can go purchase it if you want a physical copy. Or you can just go on to your Nintendo Switch um, shop and download the game like that. And it'll be like that. But it's probably a lot cheaper to get the physical copy than it is to actually get the digital copy because the digital copy is like 50 and the um physical copy might actually be less i don't know exactly if that's true but i'm gonna look it up and put it down in the description below well guys if you guys enjoy this but if you guys want me to play the phantom trigger you guys should just tell me down in the cup section below and depending on how many people would actually like for me to play that series i will start that series I will start that series soon instead of like starting a series like waiting until after I'm done with the Magikoid series to start that series. So yeah. Well anyways guys, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new to the channel and you enjoy my content and you look and make sure you guys like the video and because that helps me helps me with the youtube algorithm and helps me get my videos out a lot more to other people especially because of how youtube's practices are which is not letting me get my videos out all that much so i would like to beat the algorithm as much as i can make sure you guys share this on other forms of social media so other people can see it and other people can check it out themselves and i hope to see all of you guys next time this has been hunter rich again and i am signing out see you guys later